Where does ABB fit into the ecosystem of e-mobility? Wow, what a question. <laughs> um, the, the standard answer is we fit everywhere in the infrastructure. ABB has uh, solutions all over the, uh, the infrastructure of uh, the electrical grid. So in principle, we fit everywhere. We don't fit on the consumer side of the business, but we do fit on the industrial side of the business all over the place. You seem like a very qualified expert on this topic of e-mobility. Where are we in 2011? Wow, that, yeah, yet another very good question. Where are we? We are about to uh, reach the threshold where uh, it all of a sudden happens. You see a lot of uh, predictions by market research bureaus and uh, so-called experts that all draw straight lines from what happened in the history into the future. Well, uh, nature has shown us, uh, like a tsunami and uh, the crisis, uh, nature and human-made nature have shown us that uh, businesses like these are far more driven by uh, by disruptive events and individual events. Uh, we see now that uh, things like uh, battery prices, they are on a trend to go down very, very steeply. Car prices will go down very, very steeply. There is a point in time where it all of a sudden happens. And that's not a, a, a sort of uh, gradual uh, evolution. We wait for it, we look at it, and then a couple of people pick it up, and I hope it's the, the European Parliament that says, okay, we've seen enough, let's do it, and that they drive electric themselves and not come to this show in their SUVs. So what needs to happen for that point to be reached? Uh, what needs to happen is a switch from talking about it to doing. Uh, I will talk about it a little bit more uh, later on. Um, there is a lot of talk uh, about what will happen in the industry, when it will happen, how it will happen, but the only way to find out is to do it yourself because it, this is grassroots uh, business. You start with it yourself and on the basis of that you learn how you behave yourself and how your environment behaves. That goes for the individual, it goes for companies, it goes for uh, for governments and it goes for complete continents like uh, Europe. So it is about doing it and learning how we can use this technology that is widely available. It's there and we can complain about the cost and whatever but the, the, the answer is doing it and we're about and we see examples in the market where it is actually happening. Where large scale uh, implementation is done, like uh, Estonia, which is a prime example. They simply roll out uh, uh, electric mobility throughout the country in a year time. Phenomenal. Consumers still appear quite uh, reluctant. What, what do you see as the critical success factors for e-mobility? Um, the critical success factors are, um, of course, price. Let's not get around it. Uh, um, availability of uh, cars and infrastructure is the traditional chicken and egg uh, issue. Uh, but I think it's far more important that the leaders live the talk. Uh, like uh, Ruud Lubbers, uh, one of the Dutch, uh, the former Dutch Prime Minister, he drives an electric car already for two, three years. So he lives what should be done. Uh, like uh, quitting smoking, when will people quit smoking? It all of a sudden happened when it sank into us that smoking is something you don't do. Well, if you go to your work in the morning in your SUV, you look around, you should feel ashamed that you puff all this exhaust gas into the air. So when the mentality switch happens, then all of a sudden it's, it's done. I expect this to happen in the next between five and ten years, that uh, large uh, communities in the Western world, uh, they will pick up this notion of, yeah, it's not ethical to burn fossil all along the road. The reality is that Hummers indeed are parked in the parking lot at the European Parliament. I watched that uh, myself last night. Uh, what, uh, what, what do you expect from the European Union and specifically the regulators here in Brussels? Uh, the regulators have to... Um um, first of all, uh, allocate the funds like uh, the seventh uh, program. Uh, funds have to be allocated to real-time implementation and not more technology development. So if the funds are available, get a nation to roll out. And it's very difficult in Europe to do it because you have to listen to all lobby groups and that's usually a consensus sort of stifling mechanism. Um, so we need guts uh, from a couple of individuals and maybe a couple of groups in the parliament to say, okay, enough of this 
talk, it will happen anyway because we want it to happen. And that is usually the breakthrough that is needed. You cannot analyze this until the answer is it has happened because then somebody else has done it uh, or nobody has done it. So this is a time where leadership has to stand up. The same, by the way, for the euro. It's the same. We talk around it, talk around it, talk around it. When is the solution there? It doesn't come from blue sky. It comes from individuals. It comes from people, from leadership. Thank you.